Hey, thanks for joining me today for episode number 75 of Podcasting Your Brand. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing learning lessons for you to podcast your brand. And today, I'm going to be bringing you my next Podcasting 102 topic, using music in your podcast, with my pro podcasting peer guest, Sean Savage of AR Media. And this episode is brought to you by my own brand, Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this first by starting with one of my daily tips. Hey, it's producer Jemmy here with your free tip, and I want to address a common misconception. This happens a lot, where a podcaster gets really focused on wanting to invite a big name, a celebrity of sorts, right? And you get them on, and you're all jazzed, and you do your interview, and you release the episode, and you're expecting those downloads to smash through the roof. Nothing happens. <laughs> Let me explain why. It's because their audience's attention spans are already super diluted because this person that you've gone after, guess what? You're not the only one. There's so many, so many other interviews of them for people to choose from. So your interview isn't going to really land on the map unless you take my advice today, which is today's tip. You want to make sure you approach them with an angle that is different. First of all, it'll make you more likely to land them to say yes. But also, if you talk to them about something that they don't really, really get talked uh, asked about, they're more likely to be really enthusiastic during the interview. And also, your your audience is more likely to tune in. Their audience is more likely likely to tune in because it's different. It's something they've never heard from that person before. For example, on Horse Radio Network a few years ago, we got Priscilla Presley on to talk about not Elvis but her horses, and it smashed. Come back for podcastingyourbrand.com every day for more free tips. I'm producer Jimmy. So be sure that you're subscribed to be all over social media, whether YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Clapper, whatever, so you get all of my tips and you get them first. And if you want to work with me live in a small group setting, whether you are launching your own very first podcast or you have a podcast that you want to make sure can level up and reach all of its potential, reach out to me at toppodcastworkshop.com and you can work with me again, a live group setting. And I'll help you with your podcast. I'll help you level up, launch, whatever you need, toppodcastworkshop.com. Dot com. All right, now let's get on to today's lesson, using music in your podcast. This has been one of the things that I have enjoyed the most as far as a creative process is concerned with podcasting. So let's dive into it with Sean Savage of AR Media. Oh my gosh, welcome to the show, Sean. I am so excited to have you because I, I'm used to seeing you not moving. You are just a still profile on Clubhouse typically. So to be able to have you join me here on the microphone, see that there is a human behind the dulcet tones of your voice is so fantastic. So welcome to the show, Sean. It is great to have you. It is wonderful to be here. And I I usually don't do guest spots, but when you when you sent out the message, I'm like, yeah, we got to get out right information. So Aww, I'm here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And seriously, so it, let me give people a little inside look. So when I send out an invitation to my pro podcast peer, I have a list, a, sl a slew, a list. <laughs> that's the word of potential topics. And I say, you know, please feel free to pick one or suggest one. So when you chose music for podcasts and using music in your podcast, I was like, yes, this is so perfect. So let people know. I mean, I, I gave an introduction, but you really truly need to lay down your, your pedigree for just a second. So to anchor us properly into this conversation. So tell us about your, your education, your career, a little bit about who you are and why it is important for Sean Savage to be talking about using music in podcasts. First of all, I love the way you say my name. I'll have to record that and use it as a drop. <laughs> I am a mixing mastering engineer, so I've been doing that for over two decades in, in the music industry, also a producer. And I was a recording arts professor here in Toronto, Canada, where I am. I created a recording arts program. I taught that for 10 years. So all the technical stuff, as, as well as being a practicing mixing and mastering engineer, and what I'm doing now is I have my, my own company as well. Aside from having two record labels, mixing and mastering for a variety of, of big and small artists. The company, we do post-production for podcasts. And I am very heavily involved in Adobe Atmos right now, doing a lot of catalog work for record labels. So when it comes to audio, as far as 
doing that. I, I'm on the forefront of that. I'm actually, as you can probably guess, I'm on the radio as well. I have four radio shows and I'm syndicated. Currently we're on 75 stations and my daily routine, aside from the company and helping podcasters with all their audio needs, is I'm a technical producer at a commercial radio station here in Toronto. And the two flagship shows, I do the technical production for it. And then I'm on the air uh, three nights a week as well. So daily, I am interacting with broadcast quality audio with the highest quality of mixed movies as well. So my frame of reference compared to most people is is the top tier as far as quality mm -hmm. and helping people hear that because one you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what broadcast quality is until you kind of hear it and i help people with that i help them along the way along their journey you know if they're kind of starting here i can help them iterate mm -hmm. as far as they need to and budget allows and get them to sound as good as they can. So clearly I was scraping the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> asking you to come and join me and talk to me about this stuff for my listeners. Now, here's the thing. We, we share clubhouse stages a lot together. And so we've gotten to know each other over, I guess, over a year now, must be almost two probably. And when yeah. you you meet somebody who is just as passionate about you as sound for whatever their own reasons i get really excited about it so you know i'm in podcasting from my roots are from the entrepreneurial business side like let's build a brand and everything else and ultimately that's all of our pod as producers that's all of our goals but you being able to focus in on your talent and your passion of sound quality has taught all of us a lot and I have a lot of respect for the space that you you occupy and the niche that you're serving so for example you know someone might come to me wanting to me to produce it for one reason but Jody Krangle I know is a, is a client of yours and she like sound absolutely has to be when we're talking about pristine like she's a voiceover artist it is her bed and, bread and butter she's at the voiceover opener for my one of my other shows the podfest podcast so that you are who that client needs and so for you to be here now lending your talent to the podcasting space is fantastic so glad to have you here and by the way the rumor is true he showed me before we recorded he does have long hair <laughs> It's just hidden right now, but I saw it. I saw it. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about using pod music in your podcast. W what is the opportunity here? What are some, some of your general thoughts on how, how and why it's done and how to do it right? So this is the typical scenario I run into with uh, new podcasters. And again, you don't know what you don't know. There's no blame here. Just nod your head, those of you who fall into this category, and we can take you on a little journey. <laughs> so wh what what I usually see is somebody will go to uh, a, a company or an online sort of one of those places where you can just buy uh, loops. And, you know, you buy them for a minute or 30 seconds, and you go, oh, I love this one. This is cool. Mm -hmm. Again, there's nothing wrong with it, but this is what typically happens. Mm -hmm. And then they they have it in their podcast, and they just slap it on at the beginning, and they do their introduction, and then they're done. But what happens is they like the song, but the song, has, the loop or the one-minute audio file, really has nothing to do with their podcast. And, you know, over a minute, it'll start with these instruments, and then these instruments will kick in, and then these instruments will kick in, and it'll be at the wrong time. Because it's kind of just one and done. And then you're talking and you're doing your intro. And if you're talking about, this is me, this is the show, this is what we're going to do, it's going to progress as you're talking. But the song, because it's fixed, is not going along with the music. And then, you know, you'll do a little fade out or a big fade out. So typically that's what happens. And if it serves you, that's cool. But when we're talking to get the nuances of, of craft and getting to the next level, what often happens is is that scenario or if you are on youtube and you know they have a vast array of free things and i had this one client she had her podcast and then she was on youtube and she heard that free loop on another video and she's like why is my theme it's like 
because it's not yours. Right. It's something you got for free and you put it on. And then when people hear it on other podcasts, they, the identification goes away. Mm -hmm. And what I found is the personality, sorry, the personal intimacy and don't, don't discount this because when people are hearing your podcast and they hear that theme, they, they start identifying with you. And then if they go on YouTube and then they see it on a, on an ad for something else, they're like, wait a minute. I thought that was a theme for Jemmy's podcast. <laughs> oh, it's a generic thing. So is all her content generic? It, it, some people kind of feel offended, which is weird. I don't get it, but you can see because they were linked in and they were tied in with you and they thought, well, this is my song. This is my oh, podcast. It's not. Mm. You know, yeah. it's funny. And, and it's, day, it's psychosomatic, but. Yeah. I remember one time I was driving down the road and the, had the radio on and a commercial came on for whatever it was for. And I'm like, that sound, that music sounds really familiar. What is that? <laughs> And it took me a second and I realized it was one of my clients' music beds. And half of me set was really proud of like, oh, I guess we have good taste. We chose something that resonates. And the other half of me was like, yeah. oh, man, we just diluted the brand, didn't we? Because that, that's, that is the, um, the risk of it. It is easy. There are libraries. And we're going to talk about where you can find music here in a moment. But, but that is the risk and something you have to take into account. And I actually want to rewind to something else you mentioned because – I think this is something that people don't really appreciate enough. There really is an art to this. And when you have, let's say, a music bed, and let's say you're recording an intro or something of that nature, don't just layer the, even if they're edited vocals, don't just layer them on top of the music bed. Really, you know, give breaks and pauses per the, per the flow of the music and everything so that it really fits and goes with the energy. So, that's something I think that people don't do often enough. And I'm, I'm trying to put that out there more. So I'm glad that you brought that up too. Using your music, it's not just a, this sounds like our energy for the show. It's a tool that adds into the ambiance of, of the overall program. And that's true whether you're doing something as simple as an interview show or something as complex as an audio drama. It's, it's a useful tool. And I don't think people are exploring that enough so i'm really glad that you brought in in that um actually an ambiance and stuff is one way to do it and that's one example that i don't have but i'm going to be sharing some examples that i do have of ways that you can bring in the audio now we were just talking about intros a moment ago so i'll be full transparency like my intros are pulled by music beds typically not all the time are pulled from libraries but then what i try to do <laughs> I don't always get it right. What I try to do is take that base piece, but then add to it somehow to make it my own. So add in a, a sound effect or something else so that when you hear it, it sounds different enough that if you heard it again somewhere else, that maybe it wouldn't be that immediate trigger of association. So I'll give you an example of what you're going to hear is something that my listeners just heard a moment ago, the opener of the show. The basic sound, which happens after the first couple seconds, is a music bed. But the couple of sounds at the very beginning, I added in just to give it a little bit more, just add a little bit of the branding. So I'll play that here. And then I'll play another example that really adds in sound effects to make it particular. And you'll hear how one is a little bit less intense of a push. One is way, way more branded. So here's, here's mine. So those two sounds right there, the light bulb click and that little shift up, those are added in. But that right now is just the general music bed. It fades down and this is about where I start talking. Now, that was this show. Just adds a little, little branding, but again, it's kind of taking the opportunity to take something that is commonly found, like in a library, but adding a little bit of something, at least, at least <laughs> to make it unique. Okay, now here's a, a better example I think you're going to say. Oh, that, that did it a lot better. <laughs> Jenny, here we go. Let me get your opinions on both of those. So that was sample A. This is sample B. This is for the Horse Radio Network. This is the Horse Radio Network. <laughs> so with the hooves and everything, now it's really getting into the branding. So I just quick thoughts on your opinions on taking something that 
maybe it's something you can find in a music library because it's a little more accessible, but trying to still make it unique. So there, there's a number of things we do at my company, and there, there's nothing wrong with, with using the, the audio beds, the, the pre-made ones. So what we, we would typically do is a new customer will come on and they'll say, hey, we got the, I have this music. It's great. It's perfect. This is what I want to use. Yeah. We say, okay, that's cool. But because I'm a producer and a mastering engineer, but I'm a music producer, I write music, I know music theory, I'm not just a beat maker. What a skill we take to have the loop. in your pocket, man, that's amazing. Right, we, we take the, the one minute thing, we find out the tempo, we find out the key of the song, and when we lock it into our grid, we can rearrange it. Mm -hmm. So you're not stuck to what you have. So then what we'll do is the complete opposite of what we were talking about, having the speaker adjust to the music. We have them just do their intro with no music, as long as it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And then we arrange the song around what they're saying. Ah. So we'll just play a couple of instruments, then we'll add new things. And this is all from the music bed, because we know the, the key and we know the tempo. We can slice it. When new instruments come in, we can extend it and have the new instruments come in right when their energy changes. And one of the key things is we don't fade out. We end on the beat. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. So when the person says, and now let's get to our episode, boom, it ends mm -hmm. on the beat. There's no fade at all. So it's custom made. It's locked in. The energy's there. So we can do that if somebody gives us the music. What we prefer is we'll do custom music for you. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll talk about the the actual job of the music what it should be doing but we do custom music and the way we usually do that is we'll say hey make us a spotify playlist to 10 songs and then we get in there we find out the key of each song and the tempo and we just do like a, some math you we take the average like and we do a they, bunch of what they like and what they're looking for is that why you asked for those 10 songs okay we asked for the 10 songs for the tempo first but more importantly for the key of the song and most of the time they are always around the same key and that is the feeling and the emotion that they want and then we'll do the custom and we'll give them three options and today to this day jemmy after two and a half years we have yet somebody not pick one of those three that, that we we give back to them so and all right. uh we can talk about the job of it but the key knowing the key of the song and why that's important is is the differentiator between a good use of music and not. Very true. So I think what I want everyone to kind of zero in on is there are two layers here. There's the vocals and then there's the music. And some people are magically gifted and skilled and unbelievably talented, like Sean Savage, <laughs> and can make the music match the vocals, um, but the alternative is at least have the vocals match the music and add in something. Give it uniqueness. Give it a feel, right? Don't just slap the two pieces of audio together and then walk away and call it a day. Try to really give it a good essence that matches your show. It makes it feel like you put in the effort to get something good quality. So got a good roundup, Sean? Absolutely. And the, the whole function of the music, it, it, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, like you said, Jimmy, it's just let's slap it together and get it done. Mm -hmm. And that's cool if you're under a tight deadline or a budget or you're just starting out. But to, to iterate and to elevate, you want to know, well, the, actually the job of the intro specifically is to set the emotional state for the listener so when the podcast starts, they're in the frame of mind and emotional state right. to consume your content. It That's right. the job of it. So, right. you know, there's sonic branding. We can talk about that too. But when you're talking about intro music, outro music, and setting the stage emotionally, think about mm -hmm. music and how it attaches to our memories and how we feel when we hear think. music. So an introduction bed music song at the beginning of your podcast the desire is the same thing. And this, these are skill sets I carried over from producing music is you're setting the emotional state that you want 
the listener to have to consume your content. I mean, think about every great movie you've had, you've ever seen, and the the musical score goes right along with it. I mean, try to even picture the movie Titanic, and instead of that lovely, you know, what is it, flute or clarinet or whatever it is playing, I can't try to remember. Uh, instead of that lovely orchestral composition, it's like. As much as I love the song, literally it's my favorite, it was AHA's take on me during that scene. It would not have worked. It's not the right tone. So having that in mind, it, it has to match. So very good point about yeah. using the music to set the energy. So that's the beginning. Now, let's say you're moving along in your show. There's an ability, an uh, opportunity, I should say, to use music as a transition to get you from one spot to the other. Now, it can be literally from segment to segment, or sometimes um, you can just use it to bridge but from one part of the conversation to another. So I'm just going to play a very brief segment transitional bumper that I created for a, a client recently. Super brief, one <laughs> Basic example. But what it, what this is, this is actually original music that they got from a fan. A listener made the music for them. So what we did was we took just a small piece of it and just basically clipped it out and leveled it, made it, in order to keep it consistent sound-wise, made it into a segment bumper. So here it is real quick. And they start talking. It just levels down and then then they keep going. But it's still in line mm. with the with the conversation, with the overall tone and with the branding. So how do you use transitional music in in with your shows that you produce? So be, because I come from a movie background and from radio, a lot of the time we'll have what's called bumpers and transitional elements, especially in the shows I produce. So for those talk shows on the commercial radio, the sentiment of them is very corporate and cold on purpose because it's sort of information, news. Right. This is right. official. Right. But when you're talking about doing transitions, there's sort of two frames of thought there where do you use music or do you just use a sound effect? Mm -hmm. And it really depends contextually on the podcast, but the music should be have a mood to it, right? And people always forget about one other important thing besides the key of the song mm -hmm. is the tempo. Mm -hmm. So if it's a higher tempo, there'll be more energy to it. Right. And if it's a slower tempo, there'll be less energy. Right. So depending on where your transition is, I, I say this all the time, you want to manage the energy of the listener. Mm -hmm. So if you've been talking for half an hour and maybe there's an ad coming in or you want to do a new segment, you want to give the listener a break. So the type of music there could kind of be upbeat. Here, let me give you some energy because you've been listening to us talk for half an hour. Right. So right. let's make it upbeat and quick and and have the key be a major key. So right. it kind of gives the listener some energy. But, and here's so the new topic. Or That would work in a corporate conversation. But just as a caveat, you don't mm -hmm. want to do that if, let's say, the conversation is about um, grief. <laughs> <laughs> and then just busted with a hey happy Ex go exactly. lucky ad. <laughs> right. So if you're doing that. your podcast and you're <laughs> you're talking about something kind of with low energy, then you could still give somebody some happiness and energy, mm -hmm. but that's where the sound effect comes in as opposed to music and pumping right. their energy up. And you want to think about the segments. So one segment it has a certain tone to it. And then another one has a certain tone to it. This is what we do when we're producing music. You'll go from a chorus to a verse to a bridge, and we'll have something there to tie them together. So that's where we probably go. I remember I was doing a Remembrance Day thing, and you know that's pretty low energy as far as reflection on sacrifice and that sort of thing. So we used horns and typical things that were in minor keys, just to keep the energy kind of there. Mm -hmm. One of the big things for everyone to kind of gauge all of this stuff, and, and I say this all the time, if you're a content creator, you should be a content consumer. Go listen to other podcasts yes. and listen to what they're doing, not to imitate, but just to see, oh, I like what they did there. Let me kind of use that. 100%, yeah. 100%. So the last little clip I want to share for people just to kind of, 
get their minds to expand a little bit about how they can use sound and stuff. So we talked about using it in your intro, uh, traditional bumpers and stuff. But also if you have a certain repeatable bit, a certain repeatable segment of your show, you can create a bumper, an intro sound particular to that clip. And so when people hear it, um, they get excited. They know what, what segment's coming up. So I have one more clip for you to share. And this is how uh, we introduce a particular segment on our travel adventure show, Finding Florida. So it's a little high energy. Time to unpack. <laughs> So that was towards the end of the episode. We wanted to unpack a, a thought or what have you. So that led us right into that segment of the show for our listeners. So they knew where they were. So it anchored them into our particular spot. So that's the last one that I could think of was anchoring people into a particular segment or, or spot on the show. So any thoughts on that or anything else that I'm forgetting in terms of how to use music or how you can use, it, use music to add to your show? Definitely. And uh, when you're talking about branding and, and sonic branding, there's a lot of to be said for what you said there, you know, a tag, a, no, a tag for a segment. You know, I, I know there's people who would listen to a podcast and they're just going to fast forward and they go, I want to get to that part right there, especially if there's chapter markers in there. It's really cool. You just go boom and they'll know, oh, I'm at that point. And it sets your expectation for something you're expecting. You're, you're, you want to consume on a regular basis. I know in, in one of the podcasts that I produced, it was, it was news and we would have different segments, um, with sound effects, but then when there was a certain segment, you play the little jingle and it would put the listener in a frame of mind like, oh, okay, they were talking about this, but every week they do this thing mm -hmm. and it's differentiated with a different thing. So now my expectation is, to hear something else, which whatever segment it is, right? Right. And that is very important when you're talking about the craft of shows. So mm -hmm. podcast as a show, as something that can prepare you, if you want to, to be going into radio. That's probably another podcast we'll have to do. And, sure. and we'll have to get uh, our, our friend on there too. Maybe Duh, that'll yeah. be a great one. Yeah. And right. And if, if you start doing that, and there's a reason we do that on radio, again, it's for commercials and that sort of thing, but segments. And when people are giving, the listeners are giving you their time and that they have this intimate experience of listening to your podcast, they're used to things. And then they take ownership of it. So when they hear that jingle, like, okay, this is the part I like in the show. And, oh, okay. And then when you need to go back to a different topic, guide them back to a different way. Mm -hmm. So using that... It is a good thing. Now, when you're talking about social media and sort of commercials or your trailer for your podcast, you want to set the mood that way. And especially on social media, if you could have, and we know all these big corporations that have like three or four notes and it's just like, well, you know, da, 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 da. I don't have to say what that is. Everybody knows what I just did. Yeah. And, and Right. And you added, the, and you know, Justin Timberlake is just, you know, raking it in from that, oh, but goodness. it's, that's what the branding is. So the need for that is when you're promoting your podcast or letting people know about you, that tag will be in there where it's, you don't even have to do anything. You just put up a pay, a, a static image and just play your jingle and go, okay, here's the, go listen to the podcast. And it's all about familiarity mm -hmm, and for mm -hmm. familiarity breeding something that people are going to look forward to and loyalty. Yes. Right? And loyalty to you and your brand, whether it's you or your podcast. I kind of liken it to, let's say there was a table set up somewhere, like you're at an event or whatever, and there were some drinks on the table, soda cans, right? If it says Sprite or if it says Coke or Mountain Dew or whatever your, your soda of choice is, you get excited. You want to walk up to that table and pick up that can of soda. But if they're just blank labels, you're less motivated, right? So lead your audience by letting them know what's in the can, <laughs> what's coming up on your show with that um, very branded and specified segment bumper for that, that part of the show. I think that can be a great, you want to lead your listeners. 
And audio can be a great way to do that. So, okay, so we've kind of tap danced around it throughout the conversation. But as we get ready to kind of wrap up here, what are some best practices for finding music? Because I've so far relied on like those music libraries, Story Blocks is a great one. Or sometimes you can find uh, an artist on like Fiverr, Upwork, or some, something like that who can produce music for you. Um, or you can be a Sean Savage and make it yourself. But what would you say for somebody who, let's say they're budgeted, they just need to find a good music track that they can use, hopefully that is as branded for them specifically as possible. What are some, some suggestions, Sean? So, the, you know, the, you can Google and find a ton of the companies that do it. But here's the first thing. Yes, you're budgeted, but pay the extra to get the tracks individually. Mm. So when you go to these companies, you can get an MP3, you can get a WAV file, or you can get all the tracks separated, which is great. Pay that little bit extra because what that's going to let you do is when you bring it in, you'll have the MP3, you'll have the whole thing mixed together, but then you can, you have all the individual tracks and then you can customize that completely. You know, let me just use the drums and add my own piano. Or like I was saying before, because you have all the tracks separated, you can just have the drums and then add the piano in when you want to and then add the thing. And then at the end, again, instead of doing the fade, have it end on the beat. So yes. first thing is if you are going to use them, pay the extra money and get all the tracks separated. It's worth that one time fee to help you customize it even more. And then you can add everything you were saying, your little individual things on top of that and really customize it that way. That's number one. Number two, realize that if you're getting the free like Google things and, and the free ones that at some point it, it's not, well, right from the beginning, it's not yours yeah. and other people can use it too. And, you know, think about putting all the work in to letting people know about your podcast and then, Somebody hears it on something else and they get confused. So just keep that in mind. And it, it's okay to use it, but at some point think, okay, at some point I'm going to rebrand if I need to and get that custom stuff. And then at the end of the day, the custom's always better. And, and then, you know, you own it and it's yours. And when you're starting out, it, it's okay. Use whatever you want. But for the love of God, <laughs> do not use any music from a major record label or an oh, independent God. record label yes. or a band that yes. hasn't given you permission to use it. Yes, Be say it because you, for the people in the back, Sean. Yeah, you will, <laughs> you will get hammered. Hammered. Uh, and, and so this is my law background coming in now. Yes, yes. And actually, real quick, even if they do give you permission, still still heed a, a word of caution because if for some reason those rights get sold you know whatever that permission was if it was verbal or even if it was contracted you need to know what those were because if those rights get sold you might lose that permission and then you still get ding you can still get half your stuff kicked off of youtube or what have you it, right right so the the issue we're talking about here is licensing and yes. the key is Gordon it's Carmark, a, you're coming on the show man to talk about this stuff <laughs> well the the key is a license so a license yeah. means you can use it but you don't own it right and the license can be taken away at any time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know imagine you're putting all this work in and you're like oh i love start me up by the stones let me use that and you do it and they don't come out to you right away they wait they will. until you get successful mm -hmm. and there's money coming in and they have you over a barrel and then they're like 100 episodes deep with this song in your show yeah right Exactly. So it, it's not worth doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. And they'll they'll always come after you at some point. They I, And I know for a fact, they have people at record labels who just do this. And now they're using AI. So you can't defeat the AI. It's going to yeah. find out you're using it. It is. And, and as if you're a new podcaster, um, you know, you might still be figuring out your voice, the tone, how all these things. So you can take the the less risky route or have you of, of, of getting the the 
music from a library and using it mm-hmm. just until you figure yourself out. But yeah. then once you do figure yourself out, definitely go the route of getting something custom. And I want to highlight something you said that you just said a, a minute ago about getting those different tracks because from a producer's perspective, that really helps. And in fact, the one that I played as a transitional piece a moment ago that I said was from a, um, a, an original piece, the artist gave us like, I don't know, eight or something different files. I don't remember how many, but it was, you know, his vocals isolated, the drums isolated, da, 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 and it allowed me as a producer to do what I wanted with my limited musical composition talent. <laughs> I was still able to do what I wanted to bring around the right energy, tempo, uh, feel, emotion, all that kind of stuff um, mm. into the show. So s- definitely an amazingly good point. It really made a big difference, and I just wanted to swing that that back around so oh my gosh sean you have given us so much incredible information i feel i know that we've only just tapped the surface with you with your level of knowledge your ability to help people eliminate their filler words just all these different things that you can do so how can people continue to connect with you to follow you to find you support you and even hire you on all social my handle is the mix sessions So just all one word, The Mix Sessions, all socials. And the company is AR Media. Website's armedia.ca. Everything you need is there. We're going to be adding a few new services as well soon. So uh, keep your eyes posted for that. And only because I don't think I got it out of you organically, can you please, 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 please pronounce P-R-O-C-E-S-S for me? No. <laughs> so like I'm in Canada. Clubhouse. <laughs> I'm in Canada and uh, Queen's English. Not the hoity-toity, but we're we're still, I guess, up until now. Maybe we'll see what happens. We'll, maybe we'll be a republic at some point. But that's <laughs> Queen's English. I say process. A- Most people <laughs> around the world who are not in colonies of England, they don't say process. And uh, it's just a thing. It's just a thing, man. I adore you. Thank you so much for coming on. I'll probably see you later today in Clubhouse. It has been awesome chatting with you. Thanks so much, Sean. All righty. Now let's end with one more of my daily tips. And if there's anything that you want me to address in a daily tip or future episode, please email me at jemmy, J-A-I-M-E, at flintstonemedia.com, and I'll be sure to address it. But be sure that you are following me all over social media so you get all of these daily tips and you get them first. And again, I want to mention my workshops, toppodcastworkshop.com. I want to make sure that I can help you level up and be the best podcaster that you can be. All right. It's producer Jemmy signing off for now. Remember, the only thing more powerful than your voice is your spirit to use it. So turn that mic on. All right. Now let's end this with this one more daily tip. Hey, it is producer Jimmy with your tip for today. Now, I am in the midst of recording some great conversations with my pro podcast peer guests for podcasting your brand. So this is top of mind. I want to give you four instructions you want to give to your guests right before you hit record. Number one, if for any reason we get disconnected, just hit that link again. We'll join right back in. Number two, if there's anything that you want us to cut out or you want to start over and say differently, you can just say cut. No worries. We can handle those edits for you. No problem. Number three, if if I say cut is because there's some sort of technical difficulty. We need to pause the conversation so I can work that out. And number four, at the end of our interview, we're going to say goodbye like normal humans do, but don't go anywhere. We just want to make sure that's captured for the context of the episode. Come back here every day for more tips, podcastingyourbrand.com. I'm producer Jemmy.